All right, so this video is going to focus on how to write a UX problem statement. So I have to make this disclaimer that if you've stumbled across this video organically on YouTube, uh, this content may not be relevant to the UX project you are working on. This is a video specific to my interactive design courses at the University of Colorado Denver. Um, so you are, you're free to watch this video, uh, but just fair warning, this might not be relevant specifically to the project um, that you're working on or something that's expected to you um, in the industry. So that said, um, in your assignment, when I ask for a UX problem statement, I have a very specific format that I'm asking you to follow. Um, and I've done my best to color code them here to help you follow those requirements as I walk through the examples. So the format is uh, the user needs something because rationale or struggle. Um, so this answers obviously three questions. Who's using this product? Like who is it designed for? Uh, something is, uh, the, the purple, literally the word something, um, is meant to describe what it is that they are lacking or um, the tool that they need to you know, overcome this specific hurdle um, or the thing that's missing so that they can achieve a specific goal. And then the last part is the rationale of the struggle. So like the reason behind why this thing needs to exist um, or, you know, conversely, like what are they struggling with that this thing, this something, this purple something uh, will help alleviate. So let's look at some examples here. So I came up with this example. I think it's relevant. So college students need a way to manage their study and homework schedule because it is difficult in person, it is difficult to juggle in person and online classes. So the user here are college students. Um, the something is that they need a way to manage their study and homework schedule. And then the rationale or struggle that I'm trying to communicate is that it's it's just hard juggling uh, competing requirements from different differently formatted classes. So what you'll see here is that I'm not prescribing an app. I'm not I'm not like describing what it looks like or how it works. I'm really just painting a picture of what the problem is, who is afflicted by that problem, and why it's important. So another example is pet parents need a way to manage their pet's feeding and medication schedule because it is difficult to track multiple timelines and requirements. So again, the user here are pet parents, um, the something, so like what's missing or what their goal is, um, is that they have to manage multiple feeding and medication schedules. Could be one pet, could be multiple pets. Um, and the green is, uh, or like the rationale, the struggle is that it's just difficult to have to track so many things when it comes to like, you know, a single animal. You can even like extrapolate this to animal shelters. So let's say it's a shelter that has 300 different animals, you know, maybe like three or four species of animals. Um, every animal has like a different feeding schedule or groups of clusters of animals will have different feeding schedules. Some will have medications, things like that. So like they need a tool, a way to manage all that information. What does that look like? So an example for class, because we're focusing on um, civic related themes. For me, you know, so for me, my problem statement, my example one for the, for the class that I'm using um, is that the general public needs a way to report non-life-threatening emergencies to the correct local agency so that their concerns are screened and addressed appropriately. So the user is the general public. So really it's like anyone that can have an emergency. So that's a really wide net. So there was, there was no way for me to be more specific than that. <laughs> However, with your topics, you may be able to get more specific. Um, if you can't, you can always try the general public as a catch-all. And then I may suggest something, um, something more specific. Like I may just give you like a, a couple of ideas on what you can use to narrow down uh, your audience a bit. So the something that they need is that they need a way to report like non-life-threatening emergencies to the correct local local agency. So we see a pattern of, you know, the use of 911 and police force on mental health emergencies. Like, what are some ways we can make sure that non-life-threatening emergencies are reported so that the right people show up? You know, so like that's that's the idea 
but I'm not prescribing it. It's just laying the groundwork for explaining what the problem is. Um, and then the rationale is that, you know, their concerns are screened and addressed appropriately. So it's going to the right place. It's getting the right resources. It's being tracked in the right places, that type of thing. All right. So your problem statement. Um, so the problem statement is like literally that format. Uh, when you're submitting your project proposal, you'll also include um, in that like a couple of lines before it that helps paint a picture of the scope and scale of this project. So, um, you know, being able to pull in figures to demonstrate how big this problem is will help uh, will help communicate the level of urgency um, and also kind of give you a sense of how many people would be impacted by this design. So I want you to cite, you know, research and data and quotes from reputable sources. Um, so focused on like, you know, government websites, uh, national health publications, use um, academic databases to find journal articles um, or statistics that help paint that picture for um, your readers uh, and where possible provide numbers. So let me show you what I eventually came up with for my, for my sample uh, problem statement that I wrote for class. So 911 has been increasingly misused for non-life-threatening emergencies. So that's like my intro. Um, next sentence, although no comprehensive data is collected at the national level, there is data at the local level that suggests severe misuse of emergency services. So here, you know, in that second sentence, I I address that there isn't something nationwide. There's no like data that I can pull that aggregates um, all 50 states and um, like the different calls that come in and how they're classified and like if they were if the resolution was effective, yes or no. So I don't have that data. I couldn't find it, so I acknowledge that. However, I'm I still believe it is a problem worth solving because it's still a problem at the local level or the regional level. So I had data to suggest uh, from the National 911 program um, and from an article that said that, you know, in the Midwest, half of nearly half of the calls were non-emergencies. Um, and then this same pattern was replicated in other major cities as well. So, uh, so I, I cite a region, I also cite a specific city. And then I end um, that problem state, I, I end that uh, project proposal with that problem statement. So the statement that you see here. So um, when you're writing this proposal and problem statement, I want you to follow the format. Um, I want you to focus on stating the facts as much as possible. So you want to remain neutral. You want to report the facts. You want to relay, you know, quite literally what you read. Um, and in doing so, it will help build um, the persuasiveness needed to explain why this problem is a problem worth solving. When you use verified figures and numbers, um, again, like you're bringing realism uh, to the problem statement and you're helping demonstrate what that urgency is. So if half the calls in the Midwest are non-emergency numbers or non-emergencies that are going to an emergency line that paints a picture of how big this problem is. Um, so what we want to do again when you're creating when, when you're writing this like paragraph, use the format I've provided. Again, kind of state the facts that you found in your research wherever possible. Um, use figures and numbers to reinforce those facts, and then use those facts and figures to demonstrate the urgency. So if you um, there are a couple things that I do not want you to do in this paragraph. Um, so I don't want you to explain the app idea. So I wouldn't want you in this paragraph to try to explain that like, oh, I want to design um, an app that helps people report issues. And then the app will route those issues to the right agencies and people wait to hear back from, on a phone call or an email if they're issue was addressed. Like I don't, that's not what I want in this, um, in this initial proposal. What I want to understand is the problem that you're looking to solve. Um, so don't, don't explain the app idea. Um, don't list feature ideas. So don't say like, oh, there's going to be an inbox and there's going to be like a notifications tab and there's going to be where you send messages. Again, not looking for that. Still trying to understand the scope and the scale and what the problem actually is. 
And, and additionally, like identifying, uh, explaining the app functionality. So like, you don't want to do that here too. It's like, you don't want to say things like, oh, well, when you open the app, you're going to see a splash screen and a logo is going to animate. Again, like too early. We're still looking for what the problem is um, and the scope and scale of what you're trying to solve. So with that, um, go ahead and read through the assignment. Um, please work with your group to assess you know, the different ideas that you've come up with in the discussion post. Um, make sure you land on an idea um, and like agree to a specific problem uh, before you start designing. That's the most important part. So this, this assignment should not be done uh, by yourself. This should be done within, like in your design group. Um, that way everyone has bought into the concept <laughs> and when you're going to design the features, it's actually something of interest to everyone in the group. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please feel free to use uh, Canvas messaging uh, to reach out to me um, either individually or as a group, and I can help troubleshoot um, any issues that may come up. Thanks.